Do you usually do it? Do everything? Hey guys, it's uh, Weirdos at Home. We're back once again. I don't know why this happens every time with a special guest, but there's only one weirdo. I'm Sam Slade, and we've got a very special guest today. You know him from every hit TV show and movie from probably the last quarter century. The man is a hustler. He's uh, one of my all-time favorites. I, I, I get so tickled that he even responds to my emails. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Miner is here. Fun fact, his favorite sandwich is just ham because he's relatable. <laughs> I saw you tell some uh, low-grade Muppet that on YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little gray out here. Um, where are where are you? Are I'm in Austin. Austin. Yes, in Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remembered Austin being like really, uh, just for some reason. Every time I went there, it was all it was gray. It was cloudy. It's really cl it's been cloudy here. It I feel like if it's not cloudy in Austin, it's like perfect weather, or it's uh, or it's cloudy and allergies have your throat sounding. Like you've been just chain smoking cigars for like three weeks straight. Uh, I I try to do every kind of tea in the world the last three days, getting ready for you to come on. So I don't sound like, well, Mister Mina, what was it like? <laughs> uh, you did the, the screen blur because of the the in laws and the dog. Yo, yeah, yeah, my in laws live next door, and they 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 have a bigger dog than mine, and he can actually push the door open. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm right here with you i've got two rescue cats who do not fuck around so i had to barricade myself into this uh it's kind of like my new man came although it does I, i'm gonna own it i have a very branch davidian vibe <laughs> it does feel like i'm getting ready to open the seventh seal i don't want to but it may be time <laughs> uh dude i gotta tell you tara and i love seeing you on abbott elementary Oh yeah, thank you, dude. It's such a fun show, man, and it's it's one of those sets uh, where just watching it, you go, "That has to be a really fun set." Yeah, I mean, you know, it's in a studio, so it's pretty small, and you know, with uh, all the COVID precautions, it's like it's not like it used to be, but um, it, it is like. Well, the one thing I can say is it's, it's really nice, you know. I mean, um, even on shows where I've been a regular on. I'm like, you know, when people come on, and I know you, you, you guest starred on the show. When when you have guest stars come on, um, you know, you, you kind of feel the pressure of like, well, I got to do my stuff and, and like not make any mistakes. Yeah, I got to like say my lines and get I get out of here because you know I don't, they don't have any time for me. They have all the time for the people that are regularly working on the show. But that show is like so nice. Everybody's so nice and so like giving, and I never felt that kind of pressure on that show. It, it, every time I come on, it's like. You know, um, I'm supposed to be there, so it's it's great. That's so cool, man. It's uh, it's such a funny thing, and I love that you're playing like the like you know, you, you're kind of an authority figure to even to the teachers because you're a middle school teacher, and it's Abbott Elementary, so you show up kind of like the the bigger sheriff in town, and it's just it's such a cool, fun role. Uh, and you, you nail it. I mean, what don't you nail? My God, we can go on for days, but. Uh, so you're in San Diego. Last time we talked, we were both buckled down, dying of boredom. The pandemic was just beating the shit out of us. Uh, yeah, when was it? We about two years ago. This time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was living. I was living next door. Now I'm living in the place next door to where I was. Then. So you went. You went full. Uh, everybody loves Raymond, and just moved in next to uh, next. Is it your in laws? Your fault? Not. It's not your fault. It's my in laws. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my folks. Yeah, it's my in laws. Uh, yeah, yeah, we basically did that. <laughs> Although my uh, my in laws are in between here and Chicago, so they're not here um, all year round. Really? So, so is your wife from Chicago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you? Is that how y'all met? Because I know you've got serious Chicago ties. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, well, kind kind of like through friends, you know. Um, we have a lot of mutual friends that were, you know, in that orbit in Chicago and improv and stuff like that. Was she was she in improv and doing all that? Yeah, yeah, we were in different generations. By the time she was along, I was I was out of Chicago. I was. You were like you were like I already had told Lauren to take a hike by then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was. I was in L.A. 
um i think by the time she or maybe i was in new york by the time she was doing stuff in chicago so we, yeah we, at that point we never met but we did run you know we met in, in la through let me ask you a question because i've been the tara and i've been talking about this a lot lately and lord knows we'll be married sooner rather than later and i think by texas a lot we already are um uh, I mean, look, I, they've they've admitted me to the tribe, so there's no going back now. Uh, what what do you think your wife? Uh, how has I don't want to say changed you, but like, what has been? What has the impact been as far as like you know? There's two different personalities. You know, everybody's nobody's exactly on the same page. That's crazy weird, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like when you guys got together, what were the things were were you know, you saw her really making an influence on you. I'm getting heavy um, early, Jerry. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, it was, um, you know, it's funny because I've been writing about this lately. Um, it was a big difference in my life and just taking things like that seriously. You know, I was really involved in my career and just trying to get, you know, more work and uh, trying to get somewhere and then I think at some point in my life I was kind of like I don't know I, am I am I where I want to go you know like where 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 what's the what's the point where I stop and go like hey I want to like settle down and and find somebody that I'd like to be with you know um and I think throughout that whole time uh, I kind of flirted with that you know that was a desire of mine and, and I think it, one day I kind of was just old enough to go like wait a minute you just got to make time for this you know you just got to do it um, I, I, there's not going to be a point in my, in my life where I'm like, well, now I'm successful enough where I can, I'm, uh, you know, the prince that can go look for a princess. <laughs> it, it just doesn't, uh, you know, for me, this life didn't work that way. And I was just like, you know, I'm going to dig into the personal side of my life now. Uh, you know, and I say that it wasn't a person, a part of my professional part, but I think it was, maybe it was a part, a, a point where I went like, I don't know how much money, much more money am I going to make? You know, like, <laughs> I mean, you've, you've always now. struck me as a dude and please correct me if I'm wrong, but you've always struck me as a dude who more than most it's the love of the game. And it's the love of performing, the love of, 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 of creating laughter and, and doing bits and, and playing off uh, other talented people. But that's one of the things I, I completely admire about you is because it's like, it's it, you know it's it's like Wesley Snipes and, and uh white men can't jump well you just show up to run you know it doesn't matter how much money's on the table not that there's no money on the table but it's you're ready to run yes well and part of it too is that it's, it, it is what I do you know so um but uh um but now I think that there's a, a lot more um of my I think uh even more so than before of really enjoying and trying to deep, get deep into what I love about it. Um, but also um, where it just doesn't consume me all the time. And I'm, I'm, I'm more into like, you know, I have a, a kid and um, that consumes much more of my time. Than How old your kid now? About my career. Five. He just five. five. Are you guys having fun? Is it a, a fun five? Oh yeah, man! It's always fun. It was fun this morning. He doesn't want to ever get up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you know, we five, like... so now he can voice his opinion. I'm like, oh, what do I do? I can't like make you get up and go to school. I know, and I know the feeling. I don't want to get up and do things. Right. Um, Are you sorry, sorry, you, guys, uh, you guys watching cartoons and stuff and doing the whole thing? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, I often I'm I'm more of um a you know much more my wife of like, oh, you're watching cartoons and now I can do something that I'd like to do kind of parent. Okay, right on. And you're also probably like, I know half those people voicing it and that's not who you think it is. <laughs> oh, well, that's another, that's another <laughs> annoying part where I, I uh, um, yeah. Another <laughs> question. Well, here's another thing. Um, books, my son loves to me to read. I read him books every night and now there's just like this I don't know the slew of books written by actors. Yeah, uh, I saw Fallon plugging his the other night, and I'm like, now I got to write a kids' book. Like this is what I got to <laughs> do to impress my son. My son is like, hey, why do all your friends have write such funny books? I'm like, I don't know. 
<laughs> but the nice thing is by the time he asks about it, by the, by the time he asks about it, he'll be like 17 and you'll be like, hey, we're at a Lakers game. Sit down, would you? <laughs> you know, like by the time he figures it out, you'll be like, hey, you should have brought that up 15 years ago, man. I know. I know. It was so weird. Uh, I Alan, I, I tuned in to see uh, an actor named Jeffrey C. Plimmons talk promoting a, a thing I was in on Fallon, and Fallon spent the first eight out of the 12 minutes plugging his kids' books. Uh -huh. And then the other four were about this crazy axe murder affair true crime story. And I'm like, Fallon, <laughs> what are we doing? Now we all got to write kids' books? I know. Oh, yeah. Um, I have a couple of friends that have, uh, that have written kids' books. I used to think that like kids' entertainment was you had to be a special kind of weird to get into it. Right, like Jim Henson yeah. and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you have to be kind of weird to, to, to actually to, to stay in that space. Um, not Jim Henson so much. You know, that's that's the kind of space where that's goat know. stuff. That's yeah, yeah, right. You know, that's Bullwinkle. That's you know, that's like I'm still enjoying that as a teenager and as an adult. Oh my god, I cried to the Muppets last night. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah, half of those jokes are for adults. Um, yeah. Um, no, no. I mean, like, um, like. For real, stupid kid shit. You mean you mean like straight up C spot run <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, and I, I I'm the one I think I'm the one that turned my my son right now into this uh cartoon Bluey, which is pretty popular with uh with kids his age and and older. Um and it's an Australian um cartoon about dogs and it's pretty clever but now i'm kind of done with it because <laughs> he just takes so much of of what he does uh, from you know on that cartoon and they just like torture the parents on that cartoon it's ridiculous <laughs> Dude, it's, i have to tell you how fucking funny it is to hear somebody with the comedy like i mean you're you're easily on the the modern comedy dream team you know wherever you're on the roster you're on that roster by far to hear you be like this guy's wearing me out, man. This dude is wearing me out. It was oh, fun at first. Oh, I he just he's just five now, and all I all I dreamed of is like you know sports and you know the typical dad kind of stuff. You know, although I'm like I'm, I'm I hold room for everything. You know, some plays um, drums and stuff too, but uh, he loves sports so much now. Where I'm like it is bad karma i just I, something i'm sorry i wish for because he just wants to play because that's all he wants out he can't yeah and it's not just you know i'm just gonna go off and play like i gotta play and oh, I no, you, you're in just, it yeah and i can't just be like okay i'm, I'm standing up here he's like why are you not you're not trying to get the ball i'm like no, well, who, i can get dude, the ball from you every dad, time you're I wanted Fisher, to. i'm kobe throw the alley-oop over here would you yeah <laughs> No, we're not in the same team. We, yeah, yeah. Oh, for yeah. real? Oh, he wants you to. He wants to take it at dad. It's a constant battle. That's yeah. really funny, man. I got uh, Res wrestling constant. Yeah, he's into he's, he's, he's into pro wrestling. He's five. He's into pro no, wrestling. No, he wants to no. Oh, he just wants to wrestle you. Yes, <laughs> and the only wrestling he's ever seen is NCAA style oh. wrestling. <laughs> That's the kind of wrestling that he wants. Yeah, he wants to do. In the there's no pumping. There's no Ric Flair. There's no fireworks. No, there's just grappling and <laughs> they just skin tight suits. <laughs> yes. Oh man, that's so fun. This kid. Did you play sports as a kid? Um, you know, I wanted to. I played a lot around the neighborhood. Um, I, I wasn't um necessarily allowed to, but. I, I play is that is that because yeah. your is your mom being a Jehovah Witness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I didn't play, but um after I got out of high school, I played a lot. I have both the bad yeah. knees to show for it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what yeah. It, it, uh, you know, I'm always fascinated by your Jehovah Witness background and, and what you went through. I went back the other day and watched our last conversation and. Uh, I, there's so much I didn't get to ask you, uh, but what what's their beef with sports? You know, they they really don't have a beef with sports. It's just about like you know, it's just a closed off group, and so I think a lot of parents would have different opinions. You know, that are in the group. My mom was just a just an uber, you know, Jehovah's Witness, and so she just didn't want me involved in anything that that took me outside of like you know, right? Like to not let you like, there's no nobody's gonna get in your mind. That's not that. 
whether it be like some uplifting yeah, yeah. coach and like you got it, minor, just keep coming to practice. Yeah, and for and usually the excuse was you know, like like I was always I, I would always try to like play something, you know, and then I would end up getting dragged out of practice by my mom. Really? <laughs> so I would always end up yeah. Oh you know, man! A couple of weeks after school, and then yeah, uh, may, and like maybe I can try to convince her, like, oh hey, I'm starting. You gotta let me play. <laughs> you know, you gotta let me play. Uh, she like, needs me, know. right? Yeah, um, but um, you know, yeah, um, yeah, it it, it was something that different parents probably would have felt different ways i think about it but you know in general you know you 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 probably wouldn't let your kids um do a lot of things like that get involved in things oh i'm not i I, most of the time the excuse would have been like oh it's going to take you time away from right preaching or you know all the other things that you have to get through right um i know that i won't let my uh future children play any sports because i'm not trying to have any of my records broken (laughs) <laughs> I, I i my parents would allow me to play we weren't necessarily religious growing up um but uh my parents did say god damn it a lot and uh and i know that the biggest drama i never got ripped out of a practice or a game but there would be like these crazy screaming arguments going on off to the side and you look over and it's my parents like figuring out the in terms of the divorce in the middle of like the middle school championship game and you're like for real <laughs> here so I, I i you know to some extent i can i can relate i wanted to ask you um because I, I don't want to get caught up and run out of time because i mean i still i still am uh, the kid that can't believe i got a uh, you know i got the uh jerry minor on my my little uh, podcast but is there a set what's a set that you walked away from where you're like man i learned a lot this month or this week or this run like i like this set like kind of taught me more than i expected to get out of it well now i mean um it, it, it's everyone that i go on because uh i'm so I'm, I'm so keyed into like paying attention to all the stuff that i never paid attention to because i'm trying to direct so i'm looking at everything you know that, that's it's that's going on in the set and all the equipment that i want to steal <laughs> hey i know a guy who can help you out it may take a minute to get out there but i'll be there <laughs> um yeah but I, now i pay attention a lot, lot more to the production side of it and, and and how much of that goes into what goes into a production and everything you have to think about being a director so you know now i think now i've been looking at, at a lot of um you know uh Abbott and and seen a lot of the um, behind the scenes a lot, but pay attention a lot more behind the scenes than I've, I've ever done before and how they shoot the show, you know. Um, and it's also remembering how and looking at how they're doing that, you know, the style, that style of show. Um, you know, those are the things that you just have to get used to as a director. Like, you know, you're coming in and, you know, you know, you know how they're doing half hours, you know how they're shooting those kind of documentary style things. And looking at how they how efficiently they do it on Abbott, I mean, it's really efficiently how efficiently they light it, how we can come in and and move through scenes really really quickly, and um, and being on shows like that before, like doing shows like um, Curb, um, where it was improvised, but uh, still, you know, just how it's completely different now, you know, uh, how they're they're really really uh, have have gotten that or so it's curb um even the office how they've gotten that down to a science of that that style of uh of shooting um so yeah i think that's just like now you know obviously it's maybe it's a um, recency bias but the, the stuff that i've done just recently i think i've learned a lot you know it's so cool man um yeah. you know i i i would be a fool to compare anything i've done to your run at all but i know that uh, i can definitely relate when it comes to like anytime I'm on a set I am just I mean I feel like a kid at Disneyland or like I just want to just watch everything that's happening you know like I just want I want to soak everything up when you say talk when you talk about uh, directing do you do you want to direct tv do you want to direct features like that's just oh, yeah, you directing and your your sensibility oh I'm fired up just hearing it um yeah everything you know i just have to get experience at it you know i just um you, you were in a second city shirt i just directed uh what i am directed um 
Yeah. I directed the uh not not the current show. Um it would be probably pieces of it now. They're already moved on to another show, but last year I directed the ETC show. Yeah, it's like city. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, it's just like, you know, where I'm just trying to piece together like a little thing. What was that experience like going back to Second City? It was great. I had a lot of fun. You know, was this was this uh, under the new the new like the new management and everything? Yeah, it was just starting the, the new uh, ownership, actually. Uh, it was just starting, which I really didn't. I can't really even comment on because I didn't come into contact with them really? pretty much at all. That's actually. awesome to yeah, hear. Was, I guess, yeah, I was left alone, you know. I mean, I was given everything that I needed, and the, and the cast was given everything, you know. Um, so I re- can't really complain about anything uh, from the ownership. Uh, I was treated great, um, put up great. My family was treated great. Um, I had a really good time. I really wish, but but then again, you know, I'm, I'm coming in from the outside. I'm coming in from LA for a few months to work. You know, it was so it was really comfortable for me. It was way, way more fun than when I, you know, actually put up shows as an actor there. You know, right. It was like such a different kind of pressure. Dude, that's so cool. I, I auditioned on that stage like five times for the conservatory. And every time, oh, they, really? Yeah, and every time they'd go, uh, all right, thanks for thanks for coming in. I think there's a somewhere you can hit a stand up open mic down the street. So if you just want to get your stuff, and... <laughs> but it, but it's so exciting to think of you directing in that room, and it's such a great little theater. Like it's such a great room. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was weird doing it right out. You know, it was right at the tail end of COVID, um, but things were just opening up. So it was a good time for me to come in there. I think like now, uh, you know, the, the disadvantage I had was that I'm not there every day. I didn't have the advantage of seeing shows all the time, you know, so I had to like do a lot of catch up. I didn't know the actors, you know, um, I wasn't a part of the community, part of the whole, you know, vibe at all. So that that was tough, um, kind of getting up to speed on that. And then there was, there really was no community because nobody was kind of hanging out, you know, so I couldn't like, Hey, look, right. You know, it wasn't that. It wasn't like nobody was going to Corcoran's across the street afterwards, right? Like get to know exactly. each other. Like it was. That's such an important part of it. Or like Old Town Ale House. I'm like, let's go grab a beer, or whatever you want, and we'll talk and pick each other's brains. And that, to me, probably to a uh, you know to a detriment, was my favorite part of it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I always felt like that was a part of the job, and it was. You know, I felt. I, I mean, when I was there, I I, I took that as serious as anything else. Because I was learning, I was filing all that stuff in, you know. Who were the guys that when you when you were at Second City uh, coming up? Who were the guys ahead of you that you were like, man, if I could just like if I could get a minute with him at, at Old Town Ale House or Corcoran's, or if I could pick his brain? It was more of like you know people would come through, you know, um, you know, Peter Bogdanovich came through, Gene Simmons, you know, people coming to see the show. Um, 31 flavors so, uh, right <laughs> yeah athletes um you know writers uh carl hyacinth came to a show wow. and, um you know um yeah and then you know it was it, it, in that area in that old town area too there were a lot of like you know people hanging out you know just hanging out at night you know people who didn't come to the show sometimes just friends people who were in bands you know um people who didn't into music uh, other stand-ups who might have been doing a show down at Zany's down the street, you know. Um, For Bert. And 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 then within the community of ourselves, you know, uh, people coming back a, a lot of times, you know, to 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 watch shows. People like me coming back, I would hang out with, you know, uh, alumni. Um, my friends coming back after they'd gone to do Saturday Night Live and stuff like that, you know. Uh, it seemed that that was what was fun to me. It was like every night it seemed like it was something like that. Something, um, somebody, somebody, some surprise, like somebody's. It feels like a like a family member showing up almost, or like uh, uh, somebody who's going to walk in open arms, like excited to be there. Or it was this new, you know, it's 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 a theater, you know, so it's something new every night. There's something that's like the, that every night. Isn't that's know? the most exciting thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it could be anybody. It could be, you know, hey, there's just some, you know, somebody that nobody knows. You know? I mean, I didn't expect you to drop Gene Simmons second. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, off the top of my head. Yeah, and then there was, just, it was just hanging out, you know, and, and 
and with my friends who are my contemporaries. And uh, I felt like that was important too. I just, I don't think a lot of people picture Gene Simmons doing a lot of yes anding. <laughs> <laughs> That's refreshing though, you know? I think he did do something with Did he come on stage with you guys? He did come. Not a, it wasn't our cast. It was with the other cast that who was ever in. The Let show. me ask you this. I've always wanted this because I didn't get uh, up there. How does it work when there's somebody like Gene Simmons or uh, somebody huge and you decide like at some point he ends up on that stage that night during the show? Like usually if, if they usually uh, if somebody asked, you know, for, for tickets or if they got tickets or whatever, and they know they're coming. Uh, uh, or if you see some, if they see them out in the show, if they see them out in the audience, um, most of the time, I, I, you know, when I was in the cat, I'd see people, I'd see them like, oh shit, that's so and so. Hey, we should ask them to tell the waitress to go ask him if he wants to come on stage after the show, or if he can't come because we're doing something. So he can't go tell <laughs> um, I mean, that's that interesting. Uh, that's so cool you went back and directed, man. I, I can't wait to see the stuff um, you direct in the future. As a uh, That's like uh, directing right uh, for me is like the, I mean, it's the, it's up there with playing in the NBA finals, you know. But with these lungs and these legs, I'm more likely, I think, to direct a, a short film than I have to, you know, guard jaw. Um <laughs> When it comes to pro sports, do you are, do you go Chicago? Do you go L.A.? Do you go uh, Detroit? Because you've lived all over. Oh, home, yeah, Detroit, yeah. Um, you know, like my my kid loves the Lakers, um, just because that's where he's from, and he hears LeBron James. Well, him. you know, if but, uh, if little yeah, minor needs a I'll needs a Godfather, that. I'm willing to read for it. <laughs> are you Chicago? You got Cubs. Uh, I, I, I'm Cub stuff when it comes to baseball, uh, but I am a diehard Lakers fan. I got my, my Lakers Fletch jersey up here. Um, I converted uh, Tara Brown, uh, my uh, very, uh, very strong, strong woman of color from a Spurs fan Spurs. to a Lakers fan, which is full on come, come to the dark side. <laughs> so do you go you go pistons i'm still a pistons fan yeah I, i'm still sticking through it yeah i mean you know we're watching a lot of lakers now i i, I record every game and my this, this lakers team is something different this i mean i don't know how they pull this off right for the playoffs but they i'm enjoying every, all of it i'm enjoying all of it i i want you know i want the heat to to beat everybody i want uh, dude you know, the, jimmy I'm, butler the other night with an alley-oop that's so insane. Oh, that, that, I just like I can't, I can't. I've never seen anybody like just turn. He was on. here. He was here. Well, he I caught. Become, it. I just become so unreal at, at at a certain point in time. I mean, it just happens in the NBA now. I think because so many of these guys are just so many of them are so good. They're so incredible. Like anybody can anybody can go off. You know. And it used to not be that way. I mean, let me. Wait, so were you? Were you like? You must have been a. Uh, I mean, you were a kid when the Detroit Bad Boys were making their run, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a well, young adult. Yeah, but yeah. No, yes, we'll say kid. So that's why I'm a solid Pistons fan. Yeah. Um, so who was your favorite player on that team? That I'm always, I've been, I'm forever Isaiah. fascinated with that team. Isaiah. Oh. Isaiah oh. I've got it. I've oh, got they all were hateful. I mean, who you, else? You can't. <laughs> you can't see it. I've got a frame photo of the Dream Team. And it's funny <laughs> because uh, Christian Leitner's in that photo, and Isaiah uh -huh. Thomas did it. Uh -huh. And to think how fucking, how bad boy you have to be as a Detroit bad boy to, for the dream team to go like, uh-uh, nope. We'll take that white kid from Duke. We're not doing this with Isaiah. We're not flying around the world with Isaiah. That's right. They were bad. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, they were they, they're, they're some of the worst foul during that whole era. Some of the worst fouls on, on uh, all the teams. Uh, you know, it was different. Teams. It was different. Uh, yeah. 
Um, I mean, I, mean, I, I hope the Sunday, fingers crossed, get to play Bill Lambeer in that uh, in that Lakers show they're doing. Get the ball. I know, I know. I can, will they get to? Will they get to? I'm, I'm I, assuming, yeah, they will get to 88. 80, I right? hope so, right? I mean, they're gonna have to skip ahead. To, they'll have to get to Magic announcing he has a. You're right. You hope so that they get all the way up there somehow. It ended with. Uh, I I I imagine you're gonna end up. I'm I'm calling it right now, everybody. Byron Scott, right there. There he is, Byron like, Scott. Going. Oh yeah, but when I'd have to be Byron Scott, like the coach, like no, you're you Byron know, Scott like, playing with Magic, <laughs> his backup, and then we cut to <laughs> old Hugh ball, putting man. Kobe in. <laughs> Look, if you want to walk from the deal, Jerry, that's fine. We can recast. It's. <laughs> but I hope, like I, I've been. I'll play Byron Scott now, anytime. <laughs> well, the, the, the end, I do the want to point out, uh, we did this two years ago together, and uh, and I look twenty years older. You look five years younger than you did. Uh, so obviously, I need to get on that diet. You look younger now than you did last time we did this, and uh, and I look like I'm. Uh, oh, really? I think I look. Hey. It's just a dude to do compliment, Jerry. Oh, hey, I want to ask you about um, Walker, Texas Ranger, because I, uh, I auditioned for that. And no. Uh, fuck is it, uh, yeah, they, no, you they, did they, it. They I did. I did. On it was CW? I'm like, could I get this? Could I get this? And it was one of the, I can't remember, maybe one of the last auditions that I actually went into a room. Oh, um, hey, nice. That's my, hey, how, that is so fucking baller that you're able to be like, the last time they asked me to walk into a vision, usually it's a phone call. No, no, no. I mean, the last time we actually went into a room where I didn't do it on my own. No, oh, you mean pre-COVID? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pre-COVID, yeah. Uh, okay. No, no. I still, I still go and audition for all. Do you really? <laughs> That's mind blowing to think that. I mean, you're, oh, yeah. you're comedy Tom Hanks. No, especially now that I can do it from home, man. I uh, I read for, I read for everything. I read for things that like, you know, I know I'm not gonna get this, which I gotta stop doing, um, but I'm gonna read for it anyway. And I know they got, I, I know they got an idea of who's gonna play this, but they're asking people. To but is it that deal inside you? Is it that deal where you're like, it's it's good for me to stay in shape and read for it? And oh yeah, definitely. Well, and also like I, I, there, I mean, I've gotten too many jobs from like, oh, you didn't get that job, but you got the next one, or you know, we wanted you to come in, or we really liked you when you read for that, or whatever. You know? So what? What on earth and were you reading for? Uh, my whole career. But. What were you reading for? Uh, for Walker. Uh, the black guy. <laughs> Walker's partner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, they were like a twenty-five-year-old. <laughs> Um, it's it's. Kobe, oh, you mean maybe uh, the boss? It might have been the boss. It's Kobe Hall. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He's the, he's the boss, dude. He's Jerry, the boss. That... Yeah, I you know I just go by the old show. So it was the black guy from the old show who plays kind of the same character. It's the same thing, right? I guess, right. His, I guess that is his boss. It's not his partner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I gotta tell you, that would that show would be doing a lot better had you played that part. Uh, that uh, we, by the way, we would have we would have had so much fun on sets. Kobe's the sweetest guy in the world. Um, yeah, but every once in a while, I you know it kind of a little disheartening when you look off to the corner and the guy who's supposed to be playing the big boss is like mumbling his lines to himself out loud. You know, like, <laughs> but he's great. He's great though. Uh, but boy. That's so funny, Jerry. You know, the show would have had a totally different tone. They probably wouldn't be well, getting canceled right now. Is it really? Well, it got the season got cut no, short. No, Some no. of it was due to the 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 fear of the writer strike, right? Strike. Mm -hmm. What is uh? What are your feelings about that that situation? I don't know. You know, um... damn it, Just Jerry. We could have been on Walker together. <laughs> Well, I'm a writer too, right? So I get all the info. Um, you know, I didn't go to the last meeting. I went to a lot of the meetings when we were going through the stuff with the uh, with the agents and stuff because I was really on that subject. This one I wasn't on as much. 
and you know the last time there was a writer strike i was i was on a show i was a regular on the show um in fact uh, my my season got cut short because of the writer strike and i show the show ended because of the strike never came back you mean like the last um, one the last one yeah 2007 yeah, yeah. Um, now fortunately i had signed a um a deal which was weird because I was like one of the people I was getting money throughout that whole time. And even after the strike, I was getting money just to sit around at home, which is not, I don't, I wouldn't suggest that for anybody, but, um, I feel kind of dirty they, they, after a while. Well, no, I was, you know, I was writing <laughs> and stuff. I actually ended up doing a, um, a pilot for HBO right after that, because I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to, you know, do the show, uh, do I, I'm, I'm ready to do whatever. I'll write a show for you. And they were like, no, you wait before you get cast. They never, they never cast me on anything. Um, they just paid me all that money to sit around. And then right after that, I went and tried to do a, uh, a show, you know, a pilot. Um, but yeah. Um, so you know, I, I, they could have paid me to, to, to write something and, you know, at least had something in the, you well, know, at least you're doing right something now. right. You know, just right. Right. Um, but you know, this is kind of like the way that things kind of operated back then. I don't know if they would actually do that now, but I mean, actually they don't, they don't do holding deals like that now. Um, but, um, Jerry, I know. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I know. <laughs> no, you know more than I know. You're right. Uh, but uh, do, you, how, do you think it's going to be a long one? Cause the last one was kind of long. You know, I don't know. You just never know? That this kind of stuff is un, is completely unpredictable. I, the one thing I will say is that th th it seems like more likely to have a break in it where if it does go for any length of time, I can see certain parties uh, breaking off with that whole whatever they call the AMPT or whatever the um, the, the organization is where all the producers mm -hmm. have. Yeah. I could see some of them um, breaking and making a deal with the writers and some of them not right especially the legacy stuff the the networks and stuff and netflix saying like hey you know um you know most of the work we do is in union we get work from all over the world and we don't have to deal with unions so we can stay out of this for a while and uh it'll be tough it'll be it'll be weird if netflix goes non-union but that that i that's a weird thing that i could foresee maybe happening it's really interesting. It's just it's it's such a complicated deal to somebody just picking up the paper and going, "Why is it my show coming on?" Right? Like it's there's so many moving parts. Well, and then that knowing that that won't happen for a couple of months means that that makes a strike more likely. But knowing um, the amount of money that people can make, and knowing <laughs> all the people now that are involved in that, you know, now when you have when you do have a Netflix, when you have a streaming thing, you have more people that are that are invested in shows going on the air um than just a network television show now there's programmers there's all you know there's just a massive amount of people so you know hopefully with that then that amount of people being involved that'll maybe push people to make a you know a fair get a deal done yeah get a deal but it has i i you know i i will agree it has changed the the nature of writers and how they work um really you know yeah because it was a standard in network television and that standard kind of held a little bit in, in in cable and then it completely went away with the streaming you know they can have like one or two people write a write a show and that was just like unheard of um but streamers will go like well you're gonna do nine episodes so why can't we just have three or four people writing the show and the writers go like well because it's still nine episodes. We're still working. Now we're working 20 hours a day. You know, right. To get these nine episodes. And then the rest of the year, I'm not working because I, you don't want just, to or, you know, or, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I think that, uh, and, and, and then the residuals too, I think that that really has to, has to get worked out. Um, it's not the same, uh, for actors, uh, they don't have the same kind of deal. So I think if they get that deal worked out, uh, um, I, I think there's a place that they, they can, they can come to and, and get worked out. Um, but hopefully don't, they won't. I mean, eventually, I mean, eventually the fans are going to put pressure on it and, you know, 
Yeah, right. usually, you know, yeah, it starts out with like the late night shows. And then uh, they're saying a lot of people are saying they're not going to cross the picket line, which was different from last time. And then right. they come out with some more definite rules. There was a lot of stuff <clears throat> that was going on. Like I still work. I was acting on the show and we worked for a couple of weeks until we ran out of scripts. Right. Um, until then, until the take ran out. Right? Weird on set. I was actually was watching it. This is a show called um, Carpoolers. You can watch somebody. Play yeah, it. I remember that. Um, YouTube. Um, yeah, and I, I was watching some of the episodes that we did after the strike, and it looks like it looks weird. It looks like <laughs> nobody was there, <laughs> right? You know, I remember stopping and 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 while we were shooting and going like, "Oh, this is weird," or there was a mistake in the script, and like, "What are we gonna do?" And everybody looking. Like, like, what? What do you mean? What? Do... <laughs> that's really that's really funny. Is there has there ever been a? Uh... You strike me as a dude who. I uh, would love to do some deep dramatic stuff. Um, but I think inside yeah, of most comics, to get like, yeah, I guess so. Not too deep, you know. I mean, you know, but um, but yeah, I guess the best drama has like really good comedy in it anyway. So, you know, I I like just doing really good stuff. What's uh, uh tell me tell what's some stuff you've watched lately, like the last year a couple years that have really fucking like really clicked for you with your creative your that, that creative high for you when you've seen it you mean like new stuff or just, just like anything i mean anything uh, new I'm stuff anything always, new stuff anything i'm just trying to pick your brain um i mean i'm always like going back because i'm, I'm I was working on something or writing something so i'm always like looking at something that is inspired what i'm working on and uh, right now I'm working on something uh, that was, I, I got a lot of stuff from Mean Streets. Oh, um, oh, what a flick. It's so good. And I like it for different reasons that I did, you know, when I was younger. Tell when me, please younger, go on. This is, this is, I like, the uh, last movie yeah. I thought you'd bring up today. Oh, really? Yeah, I, 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 I have a copy of it like right here on this, right over here. I can't get Terry to watch it. I, do not. I think like out of all his like canon or whatever, that was one of the later movies that I saw, like like in the in the late eighties or not. I was I, I think I was already at Second City like 20, 22, 23 before I saw it. Okay, right. Okay, so I, I yeah, I would have seen it like after Goodfellas. Yeah, but also after Raging Bull and Casino after, and. Casino. Well, not, not, not necessarily casino, but like after Raging Bull, after um, uh, 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 King of Comedy, King of Comedy. Um, yeah. So that's what you need to remake, dude. You need to do King of Comedy as a series. I, who am I to tell you what to be doing? But you, as that. Oh, the oh. Anyways, um, please, Green Streets. So yeah, but but also just interested in seeing that as like you know it was his first movie, yeah, um, first movie movie, yeah. Uh, Boxcar Bertha, which I've I've seen, it's not really like really really worth watching. You know, you don't like no. want to brag to a woman that you saw a Boxcar Bertha, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think when I first the first time I saw it when I was younger, you know, I probably saw it right after um, a Goodfellas, right? Uh, seeing it as the movie that it kind of inspired Goodfellas. Knowing like Scorsese, like seeing Scorsese in this vein, seeing him do this kind of stuff and going like, oh, what kind of inspired that? Oh, he did this movie called Mean Streets, which probably wouldn't have interest me, interested me when I was younger. Um, I don't know, because I really like Raging Bull. And I like that kind of gritty kind of stuff. So maybe if I'd have seen like a late, late movie. But yeah. hey, just like, like what draws you to that? Because on paper. In today's woke world, there's no reason you should be interested in it, being that there's not a black dude in those movies. If they are the throw, is it the intensity of the I mean, act? If there is, is it the is, intensity of the characters? I mean, because I, you know, as a dirtbag white guy, I'm hook, line, seeker, right? Like I'm built an audience, no matter how old I am. Well, I, you know, I got into it. Like, if you read the script too, the script is great. I mean, it's really written in like Martin Scorsese's like. Talk, speak that you know, that he uses words like 
like uh, of that nature and stuff. You know, <laughs> it's like in the script. Like it's like you know, his voice plays like uh, when he talks, it sounds like a guy playing ragtime piano. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, but um, yeah, just interesting to see how like um, somebody had like these ideas, how they how they play with those, how they play with those ideas for their whole career. So don't feel bad about like getting into this because you have a certain idea, a certain thing that you want to do. And if that reflects in a lot of your work, um, it makes sense. You know, now I can see that in Scorsese where, you know, you might not be able to see that individually when you go see the movies or whatever. But, you know, after a while, you can kind of see like, oh, he's always kind of playing around with these themes. And and he says that. Um, and that's good. That's a good thing. It really like inspires a lot of good work. But he he, uh, he found his flavor with Main Streets. I mean, it was his first movie, but you know, it was like it was the beginning of him doing a lot of things, and a lot of themes that are in that movie are things that he just continues to keep doing. I mean, Kaitel, oof, Kaitel in Main Streets. It's so, uh, so good, so good seeing him do. I, you know, I was more used to like the more high status kind of stuff that he was doing, you know, when I, I uh, and hadn't seen a lot of stuff that when he was younger, you know. Um, he's that he's the guy at the urinal. I oh, know, isn't he the guy that takes the shot at the end? Oh, uh, can I tell? No, uh, Scorsese takes the shot at them at the end. Um, it's is he in the car? I can't. I can't. I, I think he is. I, I know he's with the other, with the other guy. Uh, yeah, with the other gangster, right? Yeah. Um, God, but here's my favorite, Jerry. Yeah. The the talk where where Kaito holds De Niro to calls him out on the shit. I was gonna get uh -huh. some money. I no, I had the money. I was gonna bring it. I was gonna bring it to you. You know, I but I got caught up, and it's all thing and. Did you did you ever want to do like were you a Sopranos fan? Did you ever want to do like a mob thing? You know, no, no, it's not not so much that because I always felt like that's not my milieu, is not my genre, but more of like, oh, I, I relate to that. I would love to do something like that in my own in your own flavor. Genre. Right, right, exactly. Like I definitely related to to all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, yeah, because I, I always felt like he was just more um, real and just more true to, like, what he knew. He knew how these people talked. He knew how people talked. It was um, from his neighborhood, yeah. right? Like, he just wrote about... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so that's the way it felt. It never felt to me like it was, like, this, you know, theatrical thing. It always felt like, oh, he's just writing, like, people... Right. It's not, it's, not, it's not Jim Cameron trying to do fucking Avatar, right? Like, what did Blue Cat say? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> have you ever thought about doing something about the world of Jehovah Witness? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Really? I've I've, uh, I've written I've written stuff about it. Yeah, um, you know, the, there's not a tremendous amount of interest, so I've tried to come at it in a kind of a, a few different ways, um, and then you know, hopefully one of those ways will click with with something, with someone, you know, in something, yeah. But yeah, I, I've different. I've I've written it into things. I've written about it, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I think at some point, you know, something I'll get something out. So I'll catch. Well, I mean, if I mean, if anybody's gonna make it work, it's gonna be the dude who's been a staple for twenty five years in comedy. And my God, I, I don't I don't mean to do this, but fuck, I went through the IMDb. It was just go 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 go. Just everything of like my every formative time of my life. Um, do you ever run into anybody uh, in the world of performing and acting and entertainment who who has a Jehovah Witness story and who's like, hey, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's funny, too, because uh, everybody has a different experience, but that was part of my uh, whole... Because you spoke out early, and you were one of the first guys I can remember being... Really real about it. Yeah, and I wasn't, and I didn't speak out about it early. It was kind of like me, it, it was actually me uh, in my effort to kind of, I, I had met so many people, you know, who had the same kind of backgrounds I had, you know, um, and I was just like, man, I wonder, 
what is it about this? What is it about, you know, for, at first I was like, what is it about Jehovah's Witnesses that so many black male comedians and, you know, that, that it's produced so many black male comedians, you know? <laughs> uh, and then uh, I started to meet people uh, who weren't uh, African-American comedians, male comedians. I thought you were about to say, yeah. insert your J.B. Smooth story here. <laughs> Not J.B. Smooth. No, I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> No, Tracy Morgan, Tracy, these, all pe these people have really? talked about it. Um, really? Yeah, and people that I've talked to, I've talked to people about it, like, you know, people, Tracy Morgan, um, uh, Mike Epps, um, the Wayans. Really? The Wayans? The Wayans. Uh, what is it about, uh, what is it about such that, what is it about that strict mindset and crazy because I went back and watched our conversation from last time. You really broke it down. I don't want to get back into uh, stuff we've already talked about. But what is it about that that mindset and that controlling that creates such brilliant, funny minds? Like, like, fuck that. Let's push the envelope. Let's fucking say stuff that we're not supposed to say at school. Like, let's do this. Um. Speak for you know, all the good, you know, talented it, black comedians. It, Go ahead, your turn, Jerry. Well, no, no. I'm seeing so many people come from so many different it's from come from it in, about it and from so many different ways. Really, in so many different ways. You know, from people who do stand up, to people who do things like me, who do like a different kind of thing. You know, who write their own material, to people who just act, the people who, who comedically act, the people who, who write who, and write. Um, and there's so and, there, and then there's Tina Fey, who people don't realize. Is that? What's that? <laughs> Tina Fey. Did you sign up? No. What? Tina Fey was Jehovah Witness growing up? Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That was too far to go for that joke. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, she was not. No. <laughs> uh, no, but, you know, Quinta Brunson on uh, the L Abbott Elementary uh, what was, was, she grew up in Jehovah Really? She did too. She did too. Yeah. Um. But then, you know, yeah, I started to meet a bunch of other people from a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different different things, not just people who are actors, you know. Sure. But what, what I'm saying is, what is it? What? It, but what is it about the Jehovah Witness background that creates these great performers? Is it because you've been so withheld, so shut down and shut off? Oh, no, I don't think it has anything to do with that. It just, just happens that I think a lot of people. You're just talented or you're not. <laughs> No, I think just a lot of people have have gone through that, and I think um, a lot of people have been kind of just touched by the the organization. You know, um, it's a it's it's a widespread thing, you know, and it's a widespread thing, especially with people who don't have a lot of money. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like an underground thing. You know, like if you talked about to general culture about like Amway in the 90s you know the general culture would be like oh yeah Amway Amway is huge can, he, can you do me a favor I noticed we talked about it. we talked about Amway a lot in our last conversation can you explain for the folks what exactly Amway was because it was a punchline for so long but it, it is what it what it is uh it's 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 this products it's called American Way it's a multi um marketing multi-level multi marketing right and there's so many like now multi-level marketing has become such a newer kind of thing. Uh, it, it, it's probably not even recognizable what it is because so much of that stuff was word of mouth. It worked through kind of different, um, different mediums than that kind of stuff does now, which everything, all that stuff now works through the internet. It worked through like organizations. Well, um, then you have like your Mary Kay. Everybody runs with that pink S every once in a while. You remember? Remember that people were, yeah, and and you know, people remember Avon, um, you know, yeah, stuff like that. I told Tara the other day, I was like, oh, I, she is so lucky I'm not a white woman, she didn't fall in love with a white woman because I watched my, uh, I don't know if you heard about his Matthew McConaughey's like uh Tony Robbins program he has going on, and you watch like the first three hours on YouTube, and you're like, yeah, McConaughey, preach it, brother, here we go. And then the end of it is like, and for a thousand dollars, I can teach you the way. And I was, doing you know, I slammed the laptop shut, but I was like, Tara, if I was a white woman, <laughs> we'd be in trouble. Yeah. 
Um, what is it that draws people to that, though? Is it just like the uh, I mean, money? I mean, the, the promise of like <laughs> the, the, the draw of what they what they say, you know, like you're gonna be able to get the pink Escalade, <laughs> pink pink Cadillac, yeah. Um, on you know, on your own business, the 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 the, the riches, yeah. I mean, I've yet yeah, to hear any true success story from any of those operations. You know, well, the true success stories are usually the person that started it. Well, That's up until up until he gets popped for some kind of money laundering or w whatever. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't happen that often. I mean, you know, Mary Kay's did. Fine. You know, I think Mary did Kay covers the tracks. <laughs> okay. Like any other Ponzi scheme, like the person that starts it is the person that, uh, or pyramid scheme, I should say. Oh, I know. I used to for CW. <laughs> Uh, I have to ask you, uh, first of all, I can't get out of my mind how much fun we would have had in Austin with you as Captain James. Um, that show would still be on the air. Uh, <laughs> you'd be just karate. Oh! Left and right. Oh, right, right. Yeah. And that's no disrespect to Kobe. He's he's amazing. Um, I know your favorite sandwich is a, a, a ham sandwich because you're relatable. Favorite breakfast. Favorite breakfast? Um, I mean, like breakfast in general, dude. Um, I can eat any, you know, all breakfast foods. I, do, you, I can, do you go omelet? Do you all go day, uh, all day life? I'll do omelet. I'll do pancakes. Next time, do, next time you're in omelet, I'll do it next any, time you're in time Austin, day. Next time you're in Austin, I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you over. I'm gonna make you the greatest omelet you've ever had. Oh, okay, I think you're gonna take me to a great omelet place. This. Uh... <laughs> I went to a place. This is the uh, Hobbit place. What's the place that's uh, there's a big giant lake with a lot of big giant rocks, and there's a big restaurant that looks over the lake. The Oasis. It's a really nice place. The Oasis. The Oasis. Maybe looks over the rocks looks over the lake. I think it's. I think you're thinking of the Oasis. Uh, that place had really good food, from what I remember. Really, must have been that place. Like, like. Club sandwiches kind of food, like kind of stuff. yeah, like country club food. You might have been at the Austin Country Club. You see, Jerry, when you're a big star like you, and you just get driven to fancy. That was my my girlfriend at the time's dad, but yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I gotta ask. So uh, you know, we're wrapping this up on this hour, but uh, uh your in laws gotta love you, right? You guys moved in next door. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. We're close. Well, you know, they love us, but we're not living in their house. We're next door, so that's All a right. Difference. So they got they got us out. I mean, even that is <laughs> such a. I mean, God speeds her. Uh, I'm still selling uh, Tara's mom on this HBO show I'm in right now, and she's, well, we'll check it out when we get Hulu to work, and you're like, that's fine. Just what show are you doing? I was on Love and Death. Oh, it's cool. Better. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the first three dropped last night. I had a panic attack all week. Uh, but it was it was Jesse Clemens and Elizabeth Olsen um, having their uh -huh. affair. And then the last four episodes are The Trial, and that's going to come out weekly, and I play uh, the assistant DA. Awesome. Did, did you shot that out there? We shot. They shot it here in Austin. They shot it on soundstage, the courtroom stuff in Kyle. They found me on Walker. Uh, they mm -hmm. said, we know Jerry Miner's not here, but we heard good things. <laughs> and uh, and I got to tell you, I was Tommy Boy on that set. First time I had been like a cast member on that level. So they set us down next to Bruce McGill, Jesse Plemons, Elizabeth Olsen. And, uh, and I walk up to Bruce McGill and he goes, let me guess, you want to know about Belushi and Animal House? And I was like, is that, <laughs> is that how fat and dumb I look? <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a mind fuck of a show and it's, it's really great. And it, it was a little taste of, uh, you know, I can't, I don't think I would ever come down if I, I know it's, it's just work to you probably because you're, you're everywhere. Uh, and and you love what you do, but dude, I I am. I, I would love to have um, 
I mean, come on, man. You've had the best career that I can think of, uh, of most yeah, in the is- last 25 years. And the thing is, is that, like, what I said, what I opened with is that, it, you know, it wasn't holding out for big contracts. It was love of the game stuff. Well, let's just keep it going. Right? I, I can't wait to get us on screen together. Um, so are you done shooting that? Yeah, we shot it a year ago. So it's a it, it dropped oh, oh, sorry, 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 dropped sorry, yesterday. Uh Walker's done. Uh I just shot a uh a stand up hour. Oh good. Yeah. It was called in it's Austin? good. Uh in New Braunfels, right outside of Austin. So you didn't you didn't do it at uh at Rogan's place? At at, at Mothership. <laughs> No, I got the COVID vaccine. They wouldn't let me in. (laughs) He's so, dude, I love that you made that joke. Because last time I had you on, I didn't bring up Rogan. You did. You did. And you were like, yeah, I don't know about Joe Rogan. I was like, I didn't bring. (laughs) Well, you know, I know him. You know know that, right? Yeah, you guys work together on on the man show. Yeah. That second the that iteration was, with Stanhope and the second iteration, yeah, with him and uh, I love Stanhope, Stan Hope, and I love how hard Stanhope refuses to be a part of whatever Rogan's doing now. That's well, he would never. He would never be a part of anything you wanted him to be a part of. No, they, no, he can't be a part of a thing. What? No, of course not. With his seventy suits, of, what? Uh, well, before we cut this, I. Uh, Name a couple shows that, like, in your mind, and it's okay, you're not going to hurt, nobody's going to, Lord knows, we barely get anybody to watch this, and you're a saint for coming on. Uh, but we're going to get Janelle on here, so I'm going to tell her I talked to you. Oh, good, okay. And that Lord knows Tara will be sitting, I'll be here, and Tara okay. will be here talking to Janelle. Uh, <laughs> uh what are some shows like? What were the, some of the most fun projects, like creatively, cast wise? Just like, man, that fucking felt good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, creatively, you know, probably the stuff that nobody's ever seen. Like, you know, some really, like, like Mr. Show, show stuff. Yeah. Creatively, I mean, well, I, I don't know, but that was so long ago, you know. So it was you like, never really, it was yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I did a pilot for HBO. I feel like that was like creatively. I felt. Tell me what that out. pilot was, because you mentioned it three times now, and you got to tell me. It was now. just a sketch. It was just a sketch show. What was it called? Um, it was no no name, untitled Jerry Minor sketch show. Wow, I can't even remember. I got a, a the, you know the um. I wish I could find that. I had it online for. You trying to leak it on YouTube, the pilot? I mean, I would. It's been so long, though. I mean, it's like it wouldn't. Who else? Who else was on? Did you have like a company, like a players? And no, not really. I had a lot of guest stars. Uh, Andy Richter was in it. Um, You know, then a lot of other people that you probably wouldn't know. Oh, Um, oh, come on now! I'm the biggest nerd you know. Come on. (laughs) Well, my my good friend Brandon Johnson. Yeah. Um. And uh, I'm trying to think of all the sketches we had. Ian. Ian. Uh, uh, so what was the setup? Where are you, do you come out in the opening and like set up the sketches, or does it just go? I do. I do. I come out, and but I but it was all you know at the time it was all anti what was ever happening then. So it was like anti. Chappelle show kind of thing where I came out. So there. that's exactly what I thought of it. Like, I wanted. Well, they it was kind of like they they put me in this weird position of like they, they made the show like hip hop and ghetto and stuff, and so I was in. The and, 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 and that's not like that's really your this. vibe. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. And then I was a producer, like, do it, go, and then I go get out there. I'm like, come on, Jerry. come on, Jerry. So I had to like, so it started out with these pimps, but then it, it kind of like, it was like a um, more of a uh, Monty Python kind of, kind of vibe to it where the sketches went from one to another. Um, kind of Mr. Showish. Relate, Mr. Showish didn't relate to each other uh, kind of thing, uh, but had a theme wrap around. 
so came back around to the end. Yeah, through line. Yeah, dude, fuck. I, if you ever find it or get a copy of it, please email it to me. I would love to watch it. I was just doing a podcast with somebody, one of those podcasts that talks about pilots, and they were like, yeah. I'm like, you know, I think I'm at the point now I could watch it without being too embarrassed by it and let other people see it. Really? I think years ago I'd have been like, yeah, it's just like, I, yeah, you just had to put that on air. I wouldn't have been. I, I was so, like, into my shit in my head. I couldn't judge it. Right. I just had to go by anybody else's judgment because I'm like, I don't know. This, this could be the biggest piece of shit in the world or it could be the most hilarious thing. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you never know, right? Like, I mean, you of all people can say that. Like, you know, I'm still holding on for Walker to win that Emmy, so... <laughs> uh, God damn it! Would have had so much fun together on that set. Uh, we're coming up on an hour, Jerry. I gotta tell you, man, it's it's always the fucking coolest to get one of my legit like comedy fucking you know the guys that I look up to on this show. Uh, I can't wait to make you that omelet next time you're in Austin. Not in a weird way. Oh, oh, okay. He, he's he's making faces like he's worried I'm going to hurt him. Uh, there's no one here. It's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll go out somewhere for omelets. All right, we'll warm up to that. We'll wait for like the third or fourth hang. I was trying to drop, yeah, drop that hint. Yeah, isn't that that nice place? With that I got to tell you, the the wood paneling doesn't help my argument. <laughs> The seven seal room does not help my hey come hang argument. Uh, I hope someday we get to work together, man. I would be an honor and a pleasure. And uh, and Lord knows I could pick your brain forever. And uh, thanks so much for coming on, dude. Yeah, man. And um, you know, um, keep working. Um, I, I love seeing you do stuff whenever I am. The the few times I am on social media, and um. Yeah, and then if this strike happens, like don't hesitate to give me a call because uh, I won't be doing anything. <laughs> I I will. It may be the Jerry and Sam podcast soon. Right. All right. Right. <laughs> we'll do the uh, the Joe Rogan thing. Where, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll be your Burt Kreischer. We'll do the Jerry and Sam. Yeah, we'll do the Jerry and Sam podcast, and then the po- the the Sam and Jerry podcast, and the the two the two bears and one. Yes, and oh, you beat me and- to it. <laughs> Black bear, white bear, one fucking <laughs> one man cave. Oh man, uh, you're the best, Jerry. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, t- we're gonna sign off, and I'm gonna cut it, and then, uh, and we'll go from there. Hang on, if I can figure out how to. We'll see if I, you know, this is now going to be in the podcast. Oh, I hit up here. Stop recording. And Tara thinks I can't figure this out without her.